Hello everyone, this is Lolly and welcome back. I want to work on my March paper clips for the 12 paper clips of 2018 challenge that is going on in the Paperclip Art Facebook group. And every month we have a different challenge. And so for March, it is uh, the theme is pets. Now I don't have any pets. So I thought I would just do this cute little doggy, but this time instead of doing a paper clip, a uh, regular paper clip, I decided to do a magnetic one. So, oops, oops. <laughs> so there you go. And that's the magnetic paper clip right there. So I had this uh, little puppy uh, rubber stamp in my stash from years ago from dozens of terrific stamps called Dots, which is what Close to My Heart used to be. So I had stamped and colored them in co with Copics and cut them out. And then I did this, which is a... Um, just a strip of red cardstock from my stash. It's one and three quarters by five and a half. Then I scored it this way at two and three quarters. So it's in half. And then I also had these little pieces of black and white check um, paper. It's not even cardstock, it's just a lightweight paper in my stash. So this is also. Uh, the same width, but I think it's one and a half inches tall. So I just want to put that on the bottom. It's not perfect, um, so I'm just going to trim this off a little bit. Now, to do this little uh, chevron banner thing there, I flipped it over and <clears throat> I measured what would be halfway in here, and so that is seven eighths. And I'm making a little mark here and there. And now I'm going to draw up that, let's say, three eighths of an inch. And that, with that mark, I'm going to draw to both corners here. There we go. And cut those, cut that out right there. There we go. Now you have a little fishtail there. Now the next thing that I did was I just looked through all my stash and I got out some rickrack. I have two uh, thicknesses here. I have a really thick white one and I'm going to use my um, Fabri-Tac adhesive to put that down there. And then I came at an angle. I think I'm going to do it the opposite way this time and come down this way. So I'm looking at where I want this. It's right about there. And you could use like a ruler um, as a guide of where to stick the glue like that. Fabri-Tac dries pretty quickly. So usually I can pick that up and go right to trimming my ends off. Now I have a little heart that I punched out and uh, it tends to get lost in the shuffle here. So I think just a little bit of a uh, black soot distress ink, whoops, helps that to pop out just a little bit. And some there. And then a friend of mine a while ago gave me a little bag full of these little love charms. But since I don't want it as a charm this time, I'm going to use my shank remover and just pop off the little hole at the top there so it could be glued on right here. And then I want to glue this little fellow on there. And I know that he's, um, it's uneven surface, so I'm going to put a little foam tape under his head. And I like these because you can select um, how, what size you want to use. And I think this is a little wide, so let's, it is. He's not that big. And I tend to take my little scraps and stick them right here to, for use later. Like that. Okay, now I know he's going to go over here, and I also want him to stick to this rickrack. 
So let's add some Fabri-Tac right over that. Uh, and then I have to glue this on. And I think what I did with this one, I put a little bow around his neck and I think I'll do that again. So I use this narrow ribbon and I just leave it on the spool. I make two loops with my fingers. I, my fingers are all gluey. Then I just wrap one uh, loop around the other, thread it through. Oops, a little too much here. Keep grabbing those loops and pull them. Now I did see a video and I posted it on my Facebook page, on uh, Facebook profile on using a fork to do these really small bows. I need to get that back out and practice. Let's put that on him and the little love, the little love charm. Um, I have these, I just have a whole bunch of magnets in my stash, and these were like older versions of what you'd put in the back of the business card, and this is about uh, one and a half by three, three and a half, and let's see, yeah, three by one and a half, and the important thing is with these, is with any magnet, is to make sure it's actually going to stick to itself. I mean, it's one thing to stick it to paper and expect it to stick to a metal surface. That's fine, but you need a magnet that will stick to itself. So here's what I'm talking about. Okay, here's two of those. Okay, to figure also which way it's going to stick. So yes, they do stick to themselves. Now the next question is, if we put that around paper, will the paper just slide right out? So I knew that these were going to work well. Sometimes the magnets only stick to themselves this way, and which means it'd be kind of hard to, um, if you stick this to paper and that to paper, you peel this off, it's a gummy. You don't want the gummy on the inside. So I would just use baby powder to um, doll that up. Now here's something else I had, and these are magnetic sheets, and they're so old that the this fell off. So I'm looking to see, yes, it does stick to itself. Now, if I do the on paper, will it hold that? Yes, it will. So again, that's, that's something else you can use as a magnetic sheet. There's also magnetic tape strips, which are this long. Just play around and see which way the magnet sticks to itself, and then you know how to glue it in. So I have these. Okay, so now we have these. I want to stick them to themselves. You'll notice they don't perfectly line up. It just automatically slides to the right because it's just the way this magnet is. I'm going to leave it like that and not force it to line up perfectly in my um, paper clip because if I do that, then um, when I put it in here, it's going to constantly want to twist that. I want it to go in there naturally, making sure this is a little set up here. So all I have to do is peel the paper off of these now, they are sticky, but not very, and that's because mine are really old. So because of that, I'm going to need some little E6000 help to get this to really stick. And I'm making sure that as I do this, I'm not going over the edge because I don't want, um, I don't want this to stick to, um, stick my paper shut. Okay, now this is thicker than magnetic sheets, and so think of that. It does create a little more bulk on your book or, you know, whatever you're using this on. And just fold that over. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick, hold it and stick my nails in there between the two of them and pull them apart and let them dry this way. Flip it over, over, make sure there's no glue sticking out. And that's how it's going to dry for the next 20 minutes before I start playing with it, but really overnight to be a nice, good good seal and so that it won't um, come apart when it's put on a book. So those are the two. They are so fun. And come check out our paperclip challenge in the paperclip group. And I will put a link down below. And so the thing with that is it's a little, it's too late to join in this first six months challenge. We do it January through July. No, I'm sorry. You can always join the challenge, but you can't join the swap. Uh, we will have a, a swap. <sighs> Let me correct that. Wow. 
<laughs> January through June is the first six months of the year. There is a challenge every month, and you can always participate in that. But if you want to be in the swap, you need to have joined by February. So the swap will be after the end of June. And then there will be a whole nother round from July through December. And again, you can do the challenge whenever you want. Um, but in order to be in the swap, you need to start earlier in the cycle. Okay, glad I got that straightened out. So thank you for watching, and I hope that helps you to make magnetic paper clips.